Okay, so we fooled around with you know, looking at radicals and all these fancy exponents of fractions and stuff with numbers. But in fact, the exact same thing also works if you have variables. There's really no difference. So let's just try a couple of examples just for me to convince you that really there's no difference at all. It's the exact same method. So let's take a look at the following. How about look at the square root, a big square root, 25 times x to the sixth times y to the fifth. And let's see how far we can simplify that and make that really sort of tidy looking. Well, the first thing I remember is that I can rewrite this as 25x to the 6th, y to the 5th, all raised to the 1 half power. Okay? Because by a 1 half power, that's the same thing as taking a square root. Okay, well now I remember that if I have a whole bunch of different things, all raised to the same power, one of the laws that we saw of exponents is that I can just do it sort of a la carte. Take this to that power, multiply it by this to that power, and take it by that to that power. One of the laws we saw. So in fact, this is the same thing as 25 to the 1 half power, x to the 6th, all to the 1 half power, and then y to the 5th, all to the 1 half power. And now I can sort of think about these things individually. Notice it's always the same thing. Divide and conquer as much as possible. Now, uh, you might want to rewrite this because 25 to the 1 half is actually the same thing as the square root of 25. Or hopefully at some point you'll just get so comfortable with it that you'll just say, oh, it's the same thing. And so the square root of 25, I know is 5. So 5, there it is. Now here we can actually do a little simplification because remember a different rule of exponents, which says that if you have something to a power and you raise the whole thing to another power, what do you do with the exponents? If you think about it, you multiply them, right? If you're not sure, just go back and take like, you know, a cubed and square it and see what happens and you'll see you'll have a to the sixth power. So here I take six and multiply it by a one half, so take half of six, which is going to be x to the six over two, and then I've got y to the five over two. And I could simplify that even further and say this is just 5, and then that's x cubed. And now I could keep this as y to the 5 halves, and now basically this is all, you're on your own. I don't know how you want to say it. I'll show you one funky way of saying this, which maybe you'll like, maybe you won't, I don't know. If it were me, by the way, I'd be happy with y to the 5 halves, that's fine. Um, if it's not me, it might be someone else, you could write this way. Let me do this in two steps. y to the, and I'm going to write 5 halves as 2 and a half. And then using laws of exponents, I can remember that if I'm adding exponents, that means I'm multiplying the bottoms. So in fact, this just equals 5x cubed. And then here I'm going to see a y squared times y to the 1 half power, which is the square root of y. So it looks pretty different. But really, it's the, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Because this is the y to the 1 half. This is the y squared. And I'm combining them by adding exponents. So there you go. OK, let's try another one. Now, if you think that was bad, wait till you see this one. See if you can keep your seats. Let's take the fourth root of, oh no, 32 r to the 6 times s. But we're not done yet. <laughs> we're not even started yet. Then we take the fourth root of 2r s to the fourth power. Think that's it? Not even close. Because I'm going to divide all of that by the fourth root of 4r cubed times s squared. Now that is a problem. That's a biggie. And I want to see if we can simplify that down to something that's a little bit more, more, more manageable. OK, now what's my thinking process here? My thinking process is actually pretty straightforward. I see a lot of fourth roots everywhere. So I'm going to use properties of exponents when I start to think about this as this to the 1 fourth power and this to the 1 fourth power and so forth to combine this as to one big fourth power. See, in fact, this is just one big fourth power. I could get rid of that. In fact, look at that. I can get rid of that and put a line there. And it's perfect. You see that? OK. And then I can say, well, a fourth power on top and a fourth power on the bottom, that's just one humongoid fourth power. I mean, just a huge four with a one big thing and get rid of all of them. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to get rid of all that stuff and write it as just that complicated fraction all to the one fourth power. And that's what I'm going to do. So let's write this as complicated fraction. So that's 32 r to the 6 s times 2 r s to the 4 all divided by 
4 r cubed s squared, and that's all to the 1 fourth power. See how I pulled off all those fourth roots into one big thing. OK, now what? Well, now I can just cancel away if I'm really careful, because I can cancel any of the common factors on top and bottom. For example, here I have an r cubed. And here I see an r to the 6. Remember what you do, you subtract the exponents. Or if you don't like that, just write it out. There's six r's here, three of them here. I cancel them up with three more on top. So if I cancel this away with this, I'm left with an r to the third power. I've got uh, some s's on top and some s's on the bottom. They're both factors of top and bottom. I can cancel. In fact, I can cancel all of these with half of those. And I'll just be left with, instead of s to the fourth, I'll be left with now s uh, squared. And I've got some factors of 2 around here I can cancel. This 4, I can cancel with that 2. But I still have a 4 downstairs. I'm sorry, a 2 downstairs. And I can take that 2 and cancel it with the 32 a little bit. And that would give me something like uh, 16. Yep, 16 times 2 is 32. So now it looks like there's a lot of mess here. So it's good to always be very careful. By the way, when you're doing these kind of really hideous problems that you, know, you wonder why anyone would ever assign, uh, just remember to write very large. I know it sounds stupid, but the larger you write, if you start writing really tiny you know, things, every twos become threes, and threes become nines. And just write large and write neatly, and you'll be amazed at the accuracy you'll, you'll achieve. OK, here we go. So I see 16. And let's see, I've got an r cubed here. I also have an r here. If I combine them using laws of exponents, I see r to the fourth. And then here I just see an s. Oh, and there's an s squared, so I see an s cubed. That looks like the top to me. And what's the bottom? Well, the bottom is nothing there. So does that mean 0? No. Remember, there's always an invisible 1 down there, an invisible 1 factor. So in fact, I just put that all over 1. Or I could just actually ignore writing anything, because anything over 1 is just itself. But I'll put it in there just for laughs. And now what happens? Well, now I've got to take the fourth root of all that. So you can do that a la carte again. And I don't know, do you want me to write it like fourth roots, or do you want me to write it as a 1 fourth exponent? I don't know. I wish you'd tell me. I'll write it like this just for fun. I'll use the exponents again. Each term gets a fourth root to it. Every single term. I'm not going to leave anyone out. OK, now what happens here? Well, 16 to the 1 fourth power. So what does that mean? I've got to think of the fourth root of 16. That's some number that has the property that it times itself times itself times itself is going to equal 16. Well, 2 works. So this equals 2. Now, what's r to the fourth to the 1 fourth power? Well, you can either think about that or just realize that you can cancel these out and just r. And this, well, sadly, there's not much I can tell you about that. I'm going to keep that just as r to the 3 fourths power. I'm sorry, s, s, s to the 3 fourths power. So that's the answer. You could say it that way, or if you want to say it in a radical way. You could say the fourth root of s and then cube that number. Either answer is great for me. Quite frankly, I like this one better because it's none of this other stuff. But anyway, either one, it's a dramatic simplification from this original horrific thing. Now we've got this. So you can see that factoring and using the exponents and radicals and so forth with variables is not a big deal. All we have to do is be, use very careful bookkeeping and cancel very carefully all the common factors, and we're home free.